Then Aragua Aswahani draws our attention to the importance of not over-specializing. We, we, it's important to be well-rounded. And we can really take a, uh, a cautionary tale from Western scholarship in this, because Western scholarship, before the whole move to interdisciplinary work and things like that, had fractured so much that the historians don't talk to the political theorists, and the political theorists don't talk to the economists, and the economists don't talk to the psychologists, and all these sorts of things. So you end up with absurdities, honestly. You do. You end up with complete absurdities. Most historians in the Western Academy are very weak theoretically. They don't have a sufficient or a requisite understanding of political theory or of human psychology. And so the historian inevitably ends up making sort of assumptions or claims about how human psychology works in their accounting for, well, this event happened because of this or because of that, or what were the causes that took place, right? And the same thing with economists. Economists are probably even worse, where they're talking about consuming and, you know, uh, consumption and production and supply and demand and, and how do consumers behave. And yet, most of them are woefully ignorant of psychology, right? And how, how humans are actually motivated. And so you have some absurdities like in microeconomics and they say, well, we're starting out from the premise that all individuals are rational or make rational choices. It's like you must live under a rock because that's not true. People don't make decisions rationally. They make decisions emotionally. And so this is partly a product. You get these absurdities from the, the fracturing and the over-specialization, right? So Oraq Basuhani wants us to avoid the same thing. And it's, it's a testament to the soundness and the holistic nature of Islamic scholarship that you really didn't find a whole lot of that. If you go to the Islamic scholars like the Imam Ahmed and these folks who are specialists in hadith and specialists in fiqh, and you have many people who are specialists in Quran and specialists in fiqh or something like that, you, you find polymaths, you find people who are extremely well-rounded in multiple different spheres, a shafi'i writing poetry, right? You have got countless examples of these sorts of things. So Aragba Sohani wants us to understand that being well-rounded is extremely important. Why? Well, there's several reasons. One is that you need to be able to relate to other people. If all you know is one thing, then you're going to have a, an extremely, extremely limited ability to relate to other people and to explain things to them, right? If the only thing that I know is medicine, I get up and give a khutbah every Friday, and the only analogies or illustrations that I can use come from medicine. Well, how am I going to relate to the carpenter? How am I going to relate to the Uber driver? How am I going to relate to the student? How am I going to relate to these different people and communicate my message? I'm not going to be able to, right? I'm also not going to be able, not just about communicate, but I'm not going to be able to analyze things from different angles, right? I'm only going to be able to see things from one perspective. We saw this actually with the uh, with the pandemic. You know, we had a lot of doctors that approached things from the, the the science or the medicinal science sort of point of view. And for them, and they follow the studies and they're like, I don't understand what's the big deal. It's like, this is very clear. We should be doing X, Y, and Z. We should be doing this, that, and the third. But they didn't understand politics or they didn't understand how the pandemic was politicized or they didn't understand the social aspect and how things got loaded in with different symbolic meanings. And so it became a whole virtue signaling thing. Well, are you left or are you right? And which tribe do you belong to and these sorts of things? And so people were making decisions based off of those political or social concerns, and they weren't making decisions based off of medical concerns or scientific concerns. You know, we say in English, if you only have a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. Right? If you only have one tool or one lens to look through things, then you're only going to be able to see things from a very, very limited uh, perspective, and you're not going to be able to even hermeneutically understand how other people are making sense of things. We can bring an example or an analogy from the, from the natural world, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created things in a system of biodiversity, right? And so our knowledge should be like that biodiversity, right? You can compare two sorts of fields. You have one field which is sort of, we go back to indigenous sort of planting and, and agriculture techniques. You have the three sisters, you have co-cropping, right? You have different things that are growing together. You've got cover crops and you've got food crops and you've got different sorts of things that are doing all different types of things for the soil, for the insects, for the birds. Everything has something within that piece of land, right? Humans can go and benefit from that land. You've got something for the birds and something for the squirrels and something for the bugs and something for the earthworms and some, everybody's got something there. Okay, well, what if we go the whole modern agricultural route and we make it just a monocrop, just corn, as far as the eye can see? Okay, and what we're doing is we're really putting all of our eggs in one basket. Now, the things that survive off of the corn, they come to that one square acre or that one square mile, and everything else that needs something else, it's useless to them. Right? They don't, there are certain bugs that won't go there. There are certain birds that won't go there. There are certain animals that won't go there. It's dead to them. 
right? And so this can't be how our knowledge is, right? Uh, those actual, by the way, those monocrops are extremely weak when it comes to being able to be drought resistant or being able to be uh, flood resistant. Or when it comes to, you know, what you actually find is you find extremes, right? The bugs will be, you know, extreme in one year, like too many, and then too many of this type of bug and too few of this type of, type of bug. Everything's out of balance, right? So this is a, a metaphor for our or an analogy for our knowledge, right? You can't just have one type of knowledge. You need to be balanced. You need to have a, a diversity of things that you are aware of and perspectives that you can take on because it will not only enrich your knowledge, it will make your knowledge more beneficial to others. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Utica Masjid is trying to be on the forefront of Masajid in North America when it comes to being financially sustainable. And part of that plan is having a source of income that's beyond just donations. So we've purchased a property and we're turning it into a religious endowment. Currently, we're $30,000 short of what we need to close out and completely be done with this acquisition. This Ramadan, we are raising money to try to cover the $30,000 shortfall. And we ask for everybody watching, who everybody supports Utica Meshit content, everybody who loves that what we're doing, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this opportunity, to take advantage of attempting to build something that's greater than any single one of us, and to try to reserve your spot in paradise through this particular initiative. So please give generously. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khairan.